It's 765 and the first recorded Viking attack in England happens at Lindisfarne. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle reported the havoc of heathen men miserably destroyed God's church at Lindisfarne. There were many reasons that Vikings began attacking England. The population of Norway had been growing between the 7th and 9th centuries. The Vikings were pagans, who often had several wives and many sons. These young men filled the ranks of armies and joined ships crews to go on adventures. The beginning of trade between Europe and England had opened up great trading centres. The Vikings were traders but at the same time resorted to piracy when it suited them. This was especially true when they found new lands and people were not well protected. The first raiders from the north who set foot in England were from Norway. They sacked and killed monks at Lindisfarne and at Jarrow in the following year. The Norwegian Vikings then established colonies in the Shetland and Orkney Islands. They also settled in Ireland. The Vikings from Norway only came back to England in the 10th century and from their settlements in Ireland. The Swedes, called the Rus, were later expand eastwards into Russia. In 835 there was a raid at the mouth of the River Thames by Danish Vikings. For the next 30 years these attacks on England continued. In 850 Canterbury and London were attacked by a Danish band led by Rorik. He was defeated and killed the next year by Athelwolf of Wessex. Only twice had the Danish army spent the winter in England, in 850 and 854. In 874 King Halfdan took his followers north to camp at the mouth of the River Tyne. They raided the Picts Britons in Strathclyde for the next year but there was little gain in raiding these poorer areas. The Danes had plundered the wealth of most of England and little was left. Halfdan began settling his men in the area of York. The other army, led by Gutherum, Ossetal and Arnold, was still fighting against Wessex at the time. By 876 they had concluded a peace with Wessex. In late 878, Gutherum's band withdrew to Cirencester in Mercia. In 879 they, they moved to East Anglia. The leader, Guthrum, known by his Christian name Ethelstan, reigned as king until his death in 890. In 878, a new Danish army was camped at Fulham, but by 879 they left England for the Low Countries. The settling of a large part of conquered England by the Danes became known as the Dane Law. It became the part of England where the laws and customs were Danish, not English. At this point, England became divided in three parts. These were Wessex, English Mercia and the Dane Law. The Dane Law was a mixture of the native populations and the members of the great army who had settled there. Many place names were Danish. Many of the words in the English vocabulary have Danish origins. As late as the 11th century, when a Scandinavian came to England, he did not feel out of place. The languages were the same and the customs were the same. This was true until the Norman conquest of England in 1066, when French was introduced into England. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe for more just like this.